you took my first stack car and compared it to now, it would be a, I, it's not really the term I would use, but I was a different, I was a completely different person there. Like I had so much expectation on myself and got such, you know, not the result I was looking for. Also had to abandon the race. I mean, to even have had the opportunity to have raced this many Dakars is incredible. And it's more than I ever had dreamt for myself. And I, I, I think it's important to realize too, that like, if you have goals and dreams, like don't set yourself at those limits because I've already surpassed so much more than I had ever dreamed. But uh, that, the experience from that one to the next, to the next one, and then till now, has has helped me so much more as a racer but even so as a person because like the challenges that you face and the things that you have to put your your mind and your body up against is incredible there's so, there's so many things that can happen just on one day of the dakar that it teaches you incredible lessons and uh like i said as a racer and as a person and i think like i said uh uh previously like struggles kind of make you who you are as a person and and yeah i've had some success and i'm very proud of that and i've also had some some tough times and those tough times have put me in a position now to really enjoy what i've what i'm doing and i think that's probably the most important lesson that i've learned over the course of my last dakars is to enjoy this moment and literally have the best time possible because like i said be, just being able to compete here at the dakar is is an incredible dream that not many people get to accomplish in their life and for me to do anything but have the best time of my life would be a discredit to everyone else that either wouldn't be able to come and do this or or anyone else that's here like this literally is is a dream of mine and to be able to be able to be a factory racer and do this for a job is at the next level so I think, uh, yeah, obviously the training and the road book time and the other world rounds and all of that experience has come into a lot. Yeah, of course, it's, it's helped me. But I think the biggest lesson that I've learned over the course of everything is like just to enjoy every single moment that you possibly have and uh, go as fast as possible. I think last year, uh, last year I tried to, to really stay focused on more of a plan and 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 do things according to plan and as we know in desert racing in general and the dakar there's so much stuff that can happen and to stay according to plan is incredibly difficult and i operate off of being happy enjoying my time some positivity and i think like having a a, a plan that is not going the way you expect it can just bring a little bit of extra stress and so yeah, I think last year I felt comfortable, I felt confident, and I was ready to to uh, to do my best and, and get a good result. And like that's I, again, that's the Dakar. Every single day has its challenges, and last year I got bit. Um, but I, I, I think you know, not much has changed as far as anything else. So yeah, I've been training hard and, and working hard for this moment and everything. But uh, no, like I said, I I, I think. Uh, yeah, to, to be more prepared and in a mental state to make this this step up and be this consistent. I feel like I've always been capable. And now I'm just putting a little bit more of the piece, pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah, we're supposed to be like, you know, macho guys out there riding, but it's funny to say, I actually got emotional on stage uh, stage three. We, got, we, we went through the most insane mountain terrains and it's been, it's green out there with all the, the grass and all the rain. We went through these crazy rock formations and like the navigation was nuts we had wet dirt to ride which is always incredible in the uh always incredible in the um in the desert and it's just like i, I legitimately got emotional because we had the best I, I i had the best time on my dirt bike ever i was by myself i was alone and it was literally like it was the coolest it was so cool and i actually like you know it's funny to say i laugh now but i actually got emotional i was like i can't believe i get to do this this is the coolest thing ever <laughs> the mustache I, I think it's uh, it's been fun to have for sure it's uh no my my grandfather he essentially started this racing thing in my family uh he he built a fa built and drove a famous race car 
at, in the Baja. It won the very first Baja 500 ever. And so racing in the desert has always been in my family. It, it's not like a you know, super well-known thing, but my dad actually got his first motorcycle from Steve McQueen. And so racing has kind of been in my blood and been in my heritage. My dad started the whole dirt bike thing, uh, racing in the desert and uh, pre-running in Baja for my grandpa to drive in the car. And my, my grandpa has this super cool photo, him and his, his racing helmet, his racing goggles, and he's got this big curly mustache sticking out of it. It's one of my favorite photos ever. But, uh, and then my dad also has this, this super awesome mustache that he's always had too. So more or less, uh, yeah, I kind of break out the mustache once in a while and I thought I'd keep it this year and give a little bit of a tribute to my, uh, to my dad and my grandpa because they are essentially the reason why we get to do what we get to do here. Doing better than last year, it makes me feel like Maybe I belong here, you know. Uh, moving up from Rally 2 to Rally GP, it's it's been like really kind of stressful maybe, I guess, because you go from being the top guy to where am I gonna be now? You compete with the best riders in the world and <laughs> to be here now, it's crazy. Um, to be fighting for the win against someone like Skyler, Toby, Kevin, everybody, it's insane for me. And, yeah, I would have never guessed that I'd be here after Elastic Car for sure. I knew I wanted to do better than ninth, but yeah, fighting for the win is unbelievable. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of trash talk sometimes. I think the, all the other guys trying to egg you on, you know, pressure you into making a mistake. And yeah, there's definitely no shortage of it. But uh, something that really caught me by surprise is how cool Matias and Skyler and Toby and Sanders have been to me this race. Uh, yeah, and Kevin, like the whole, all, the whole KTF Musky Gaskets team, it's crazy. Like, there's there's always the jokes, right? But uh, for some reason, I feel like they're not like out to get me. Matias has been super cool, and I know it's competition, but yeah, they, I, I don't know, they've been cool. It's nice, and like one of the crazy things Matias did um, before he even got his gear off, he was still wearing his helmet. He came up to me and came to the door of the motorhome. He said, "Hey." good job and that felt really good because um, Matias doesn't give give out uh, congratulations to just anyone and I know that it, yeah it felt amazing. Skyler House since the beginning has been there for me along with my parents of course but the thing is yeah he's been a total mentor without him and his advice like for example going to BART and being on the best team you know the Bass World KTM Bart Vanderbilt and team has been insane. Like the support that the riders get from the team manager is amazing. Any problems we have, he takes care of it. And yeah, it's, you feel you are the, like this is the factory, you know? Like, and you, everything you imagine you get on a factory team, you get it from this team. So it's because of Skyler that I'm here and um, he still gives me tons of advice. I'm always making mistakes. And just talking to him after every stage and you know going over things like I had this problem here what would you do different um, yeah he, he helps me a lot for sure it's all like the mental side of it that I kind of maybe struggle with and having the conversations with someone like him someone you trust yeah someone you know is on your side it's great <laughs> two Americans on the podium it's uh, it's a lot to him, you know, like he, he got us here, right? So it's cool to see us both doing good. Yeah, the, the first week was tough. Um, really, really long week. Uh, most of the Dakars are always usually six stages and then a rest day. Yeah, so to get eight, which, yeah, we kind of got seven uh, with one stage, stage cancelled. But uh, stage eight, yeah, we were all, all pretty good and feeling well. So a rest day was definitely well deserved. I think here in Saudi, yes, for sure. Um, yeah, the last couple have been like really full gas and wide open and only a little bit of playing in the dunes and then you were in a valley full gas again. So it was, um, yeah, I think this year they've definitely uh, put us through our tests and uh, yeah, it's definitely succeeded to, to be in a very tiring one. But uh, we're excited for this second week to come up and see what the, the race will bring for us. I, I came into this race with no expectations. I, I said if I can finish top 10, I'd be super happy because I had no preparation, no fitness, like no time on the bike. I had one week in America in December from a full year off rally. So 
it was hard for me to come back and just so I said, okay, if I win a stage, super happy. If I get in the top 10, super happy. But now you, when you're leading the race and you know you can be at the front, it's like, ah, okay, we got to, we can win it. And um, yeah, that's that's what we're going to try and do. And put, you know, try and just have really good days, consistent days and no big mistakes, which is what's going to, you know, I'm going to, that's what will miss my opportunity to win it. So I've already had one big day where I lost, where I was sick, but it's out of my control list, just like last year crashing. So it's like, yeah.